Hey everybody, it's Jameson in the shop here about to start a new project and I'm really excited about this one. So you've, I think you've heard me talk about it before. There's a Facebook group called Lunch with a Glass Artist and it is a free Facebook group and every week there is a free Saturday glass call on Zoom. Uh, it is a great group of very supportive folks. There's lots of fun ideas uh, and idea sharing and problem solving that happens. Lunch with a glass artist. Uh, I can drop a link to that group in the video description. So make sure you go see the video notes for that. And in that group, they've been doing these challenges for 2024. And so the current challenge is to find a partner. And you and the partner agree on an image and then you each separately go work on your project and then kind of come back together and see how you each interpreted the same image. And uh, so my partner in this is the lovely Jackie. And um, I've never even met Jackie, but I consider her a friend. You know her as Full Moon Loon. So if you follow her on Facebook and on YouTube, Full Moon Loon. And so I am doing my video project here, and Jackie, I think, is going to do her video project, and then we're going to do kind of a reveal at the end. So this is going to be fun. So we were collaborating online, trying to figure out what we want to do, and my suggestion was that I love the kind of Art Nouveau style, particularly tiles. And I grew up doing um, really stained glass. I've moved on to fusing, but I've kind of gotten interested in trying to take some old stained glass patterns that I have and, and do a fusing project out of them. Now, this is not a pattern that I had, but uh, Jackie was digging the idea of doing something Art Nouveau, something maybe even a little floral, and she said she loves orchids. And so I found this image, and I love this. Now, this is a tile and I'm going to do it in glass, obviously, but I think this image is great. This is what we agreed to uh, to use. And so what I've done here now is I tried to lighten it up a little bit. I printed it out on just a standard sheet of copy paper, and I've numbered the pieces, and then I made a copy of it. And I'm going to cut out these pieces and use these as templates to cut some glass. So I have a, an idea for a new product um, that I've seen in use to create the black. So all, what I'm gonna do is cut out my uh, glass and basically almost kind of a mosaic style, create a glass tile uh, with this, uh, this orchid pattern. And so, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of work involved with this. You're gonna see me um, digging in here and cutting glass like I haven't cut in a long time, but this will maybe polish up my skills. I do like the color scheme of the original piece, and so I think I'm going to try to mimic that a little bit. So I'm gonna get started here. I don't even know if I'm gonna show all the glass cutting, but uh, I'm gonna get started in, in cutting all of this out and then uh, come back and show you what the next steps are in terms of how I am interpreting this project. All right, so here's my original. Here's all my cut up pieces. So um, what I've done is I'm, I numbered these and uh, I marked them so that I knew which ones were green. And then I'm gonna do French vanilla on these other colors. So now begins the long process to cut all these out. I'm realizing even as I was uh, tracing, or excuse me, cutting these out of the paper, I was like, oh yeah, that's why I don't do stained glass much anymore because it's so tedious often to do all these cuts. But I'm gonna go ahead and now cut all of my glass and I'll show you the next step after I get my glass cut. Okay, so now I have cut my French vanilla and my green glass. I have not cut the flowers yet. I have a different plan for those, so I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, I just use Sharpie to draw my lines on here, and Sharpie's gonna come off real fast when I start to um, when I start to grind on these. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over it with a Milwaukee 
uh, marker. My understanding is these do fairly well. So I'm going to renumber these so I don't lose which number is which. And where there's a significant amount that I need to take off the edges, I'm gonna mark that with this. And here is my original pattern. I have put it in one of these like report covers and I've taped up the side trying to keep this from getting wet so that I can kind of fit dry, dry fit, quote unquote, my pieces and make sure that those uh, grinding, the grinding that I'm doing is productive and, and makes this fit together the way I want. All right, so sorry about the blood. <laughs> I realized that as I was working on this project. Um, these are not a perfect fit but I don't need perfect for the technique that I'm doing here. So I'm generally happy with where these are and I just kind of wiped them dry a little bit so I could place them on here. Uh, I'll clean them, clean them before I go to fire this thing. But um, I'm pretty pleased with the way these turned out now. Um, clearly I need to work on my glass cutting skills. I think I had a fair amount of grinding to do there. It's been a long time since I've cut glass like this. And if I were doing the copper foil method of stained glass, then uh, I'd be way off. That's not what I was shooting for. So I'm generally happy with this. I'm going to keep on moving and now we're going to cut flowers. All right. So I have a new ring saw, new to me anyway, and I want to use that to cut out the petals of the orchid. So I have the petal pieces all cut out here and this is a piece of petal pink. And the reason I want to use the ring saw is because if you know bullseye glass, you know pinks and purples are very expensive. And so I want to lay these out here and get maximum uh, use out of this glass. I don't want to create a lot of scrap if I can avoid it. So for using the ring saw, I saw somebody suggest one time, and I can't remember where it was in videos, uh, to put rubber cement down, then paste your pieces onto the glass, and then cover it with another coating of rubber cement. And then that does a nice job of protecting your um, pattern from the water that comes off the water jet, or excuse me, off the uh, uh, ring saw. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll let it dry and then we'll cut our pieces out. All right, I'm wearing this stupid neck camera mount thing. So uh, I realized this video never really works out well as I was um, pasting these up. I realized it was off camera because I couldn't see well. So anyway, you're, you get what you get. Sorry about that. But uh, now it's time to cut. So I'm going to um, go to my my uh, water, um, my ring saw here. These are, this is nice and sticky. These feel tacked on. So we'll see how this goes. I'm just gonna go nice and slow. This is. This is new to me. I haven't had a lot of experience with the uh, with the Taurus 3. I'm going to put my safety glasses on and uh, just go nice and slow and try to get these cut out. Uh, and then hopefully all works well. And then I've saved, uh, you know, nearly half of this scrap piece of, of pink here uh, by trying to maximize uh, what I could out of this. So I'm just going to put it on fast speed here and get to work. All right, there we go. I got them all cut out. So uh, that was a much better way to preserve glass. Um, and that actually went a little faster than I thought it would. I was trying to be so patient and not push too much on this thing. I'm gonna take a few of these pieces over to the grinder and just touch them up a little bit, but I think they're pretty much good to go. And the rubber cement worked fairly well. So um, what are your tips? Have you ever heard of and do you use the rubber cement method? Are there other ways that you've marked your glass and those marks have stayed on? I know those Milwaukee markers are fairly popular, but what else have you done? I've heard about doing chapstick over it, but I uh, would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna hit these on the grinder and then continue to assemble my piece. Okay, now for the next step, <clears throat> I am going to use this black piping paste from Colors for Earth and the amazing Paula McCoy. She has demonstrated before how to use this basically to create or to 
um, give the effect of a mosaic technique using this as grout as the base. So I'm wearing my camera here because I'm not doing my normal setup. <clears throat> I actually tore my Achilles tendon. So I'm literally out here on a roller scooter <laughs> trying to keep off my foot. And let me tell you, this is... This has been a real cramp on my style here for doing glass, but I, I am persisting. So what Paula does is she adds a very thin layer to the glass. She adds her glass pieces on top of that, then lets it dry for 24 hours and then fires it. And this piping paste actually, uh, I think she called it bubbles up, like almost kind of foams up and fills in the gap a little bit, but you don't need much. You, you use very little. So I bought a piping kit, piping <laughs> paste kit that included not only black but also white and some tools including this palette knife and so I'm going to apply it with the palette knife across this then I'm going to use some French vanilla scrap that I have just kind of put some pieces on here and this is a test piece so before I go all in on the big one I wanted to test and see how this looks how it comes out so that I know what I'm dealing with so this is just a sample piece to make I'm going to go ahead and film the process here as I do this if you want more information about this, you must go check out Paula McCoy's YouTube page. She's done some videos on this. There's also a great Facebook group, so you can find some information there. Um, and uh, I'll include links in the video notes so that you can find those things if you haven't already familiarized yourself with Colors for Earth and all the amazing things that Paula offers. So I'm going to get started. Other tips that I saw that Paula talked about, this cannot go into the... Um, sink so you got to be real careful about cleaning up I'm just gonna wipe this up and uh, it dries on the sides and it does not reconstitute so uh, you need to make sure you're kind of scraping your sides down now I don't think I'm gonna use that much anyway but um, if you see me scraping the sides down that would be why so sorry if the video is a little shaky I'm literally wearing this camera around my neck so that I can try to uh, film this while I go I can't use my regular setup because I out here on this silly silly machine uh but you know when you tear an achilles tendon recovery takes a little while okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get started all right here's my sample piece it's fully dry i'm going to fire this i'm going to go 1380 for about 20 minutes so we'll see what happens all right sorry if the camera is a little shaky but here is my test piece I'll try to zoom in here and let you see that's really fascinating how that worked so it really does look like grout as a reminder this was clear base glass you can see the french vanilla pieces a little bit where i might have pushed too hard and kind of smushed them out of the way or smushed that uh, piping paste out of the way. But uh, yeah, that really does look like a grouted piece. I might've even been able to go a little hotter, but I actually like the texture on this and which is exactly what I'm going for on my uh, test piece or on my, my real piece. So mimicking what I wanted in this test piece was good. So I like that. I like that matte finish. I like the dark black and uh, really, really pleased all right now it's time to progress to the next step and you might approach this differently than i am but i'd like to get more color variation and texture in these pieces of glass and so what my plan is is to put a little bit of powder mostly around the edges of these pieces pointing and not showing you the camera but kind of around the edges so that it's a little bit lighter and almost um you know then fades toward uh, uh or dark around the edges and fades toward a lighter uh center i don't know how successful i'm going to be in this powder application but then i'm going to put this these individual pieces into the kiln and center that powder on so that means i'll go to about 1300 for well zero minutes really i'll probably just go up to 1300 and then back down and by centering that on, I might not even go that high, but by centering that powder on, then I can continue to, to move and manipulate this and not worry about the powder coming off. I know it's an extra kiln firing. You may skip that step. I just don't trust myself <laughs> to not mess up the powder work. So I'm going to dust these with powder and then center them. So this was petal pink, and I'm going with a little bit of a darker uh, regular pink opal and hopefully that creates a little bit of color variation there. 
For the French vanilla, I'm going to apply some transparent sienna powder onto the French vanilla, which gives me more of a brown, you know, edge. And then on the green, I'm going to, what was the name of this green? I've already forgotten. But I'm gonna do a little uh, transparent adventuring green on there. And I don't know if that's going to give me much more of a darker look on the petals or not, but the, I'm least concerned about the petals. It was really the French vanilla and the, um, or I mean leaves, I'm least concerned about these, but it was the French vanilla and the pink petals that I wanted to get a little bit more. And then I've got some other little pieces of, of glass to cut to fill in there, but those don't need powder. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. So one by one, I'm gonna clean my pieces. Probably just gonna hold this in my hand and kind of, you know, dust a little powder around it. And then I'm gonna just carry it straight to the kiln. And because I torn my Achilles tendon and I'm on a knee scooter with my knee propped up, uh, this is horribly awkward to work. So I'm not gonna film any of this, but uh, you'll see the pieces when they come out of the kiln. All right, so I have my pieces dusted with the powder. I've kind of laid them out so I can keep track of which is which. And now I'm going to fire them. I am gonna to go to 1300, I'm gonna hold for like 10 minutes. Um, a note about pinks, if you're familiar with Bullseye and they have um, firing notes or working notes in on all of their colors, I link to this on my link tree. So um, go to my link tree and check out the Bullseye working notes. Uh, it's always helpful to read. Now some of these pinks are strikers and in, in particular some of them need to be held for two hours at 1225 to get full development of the color. Now the petal pink that I used as the base glass is not a striker. I used 301 regular pink as my powder on top and that is a striker. However, there are no notes that say it needs the full two hours. So I am not going to do a hold on this on my way up. I'm just going to take this, I don't know, 300 degrees an hour, just to be conservative, um, to 1300, hold it for 10 minutes, and then I'll cool, and then uh, show you what these look like when they come out. Uh, I don't know about the sienna on the French vanilla. Hopefully that works, but, uh, you know, we're all learning together, aren't we? All right, these are too hot to pick up yet, but um, I think the firings went fairly well. The pink did not strike, but I only went up to 1300, so that that makes sense. Um, the green, you can see there's a little bit more color on the leaves. Now these are, there's a texture to this because all I've done is center the powder on. So uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that well. Yeah, there you can kind of see there's texture, but uh, I'm firing these again and then that will all blend in quite nicely. I'm taking it up to a much higher fuse. So here's the Sienna on the French vanilla. I'm actually really pleased with that. Uh, I think the pink will darken on the next firing and the green looks good. Um, so I'm going to let these cool off and then I'm going to start to assemble my piece. All right, it is time to start to build this thing. So I've cut a base sheet of black glass. I've got my black piping paste here and I'm going to apply that with a palette knife. And uh, after I clean this glass up and then I've got my pieces that are going to come out of the kiln. So I'm going to just use this as an example to kind of build this. Now, there were a couple of pieces I didn't cut. I've got these centers here in the flower. So as an example or as a reminder, let me flash up here what the original photo is. So again, these centers were kind of bright and colorful. These were kind of a yellow center. Um, and uh, then the, there was this that in the printout kind of comes out as a little bit of a void, but there's an opportunity for some design elements in there as well. So I decided to play with my Tabitha materials. And so let me show you, pull that back over here. So there were some, you know, Tabitha sells what I think she calls candy shop mix, which is just a bunch of seconds and chunks and different things. And so I have some of that. So this was a yellow, uh, what I think was maybe a landscape bar or something. And so I chopped it up and I thought that it could make interesting centers on some of these flowers. So I'm gonna play with that. And then there was also, you can see what I'm doing here because I'm looking at the camera. There were also this one that was kind of curved and had some purpley violets in it. And so I thought that might be kind of a fun way to play and fill in down here in the flower. And then I have the amazing, uh, a nice collection now of mandalas from <coughs> her and <coughs> Tabitha, Tabitha's Glass Emporium.com. I thought those might make fun centers on the flowers. Now I know in the original photo, those were yellow, but I wanted to go with a more muted color there so that they didn't stand out too much, but added some visual interest. So that's just my own take on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start to build all this up. Uh, I am still 
on this silly knee scooter and kind of only half able to work here in the studio. So I'm going to set up a camera to try to record this, but uh, I don't think you're going to get very much. All right, holy moly. <laughs> I was trying to channel my inner um, Paula McCoy from Colors for Earth uh, to do that, because she would have done that in a much less sloppy manner than I did. But um, this, uh, this piping paste starts to set up, so you don't have a ton of time. So this is probably an ambitious size project because this is eight by eight. Um, <clears throat> but generally, I feel like everything fit on there fairly well. Um, I don't know that you could tell in the video, but I had to pick a couple pieces of glass back up and wipe them off because I got too much, uh, some of that piping paste got onto the glass itself, like up the side or something, and that will fire on for sure. So you've got to make sure that your glass is really clean. Uh, I put my embellishments in the middle here, which uh, might be a little difficult to see, but, um, and I don't know, I'm kind of second guessing the big yellows in the middle there. They, they almost look like bees because of the way it's striped, but whatever, I'll leave that up to the, everybody's interpretation. I am done. I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> Rolling back and forth on the scooter was really hard. So um, now I'm going to let this dry. Uh, Paula recommends that the grout is fully dry. The piping paste is fully dry uh, before firing it, just so you don't get anything that, you know, kind of bubbles up and creates an issue. So I'm going to let it fully dry. And then I am going to dust the entire thing with clear powder. And to do that, uh, you know, just a, a real light coating will kind of shine this up nicely, but I'm going to wait till it's dry before I do that and then I'll fire it in the kiln. So uh, stay tuned for the next step. All right, before I show you the final piece, don't forget that this was a partner project with Full Moon Loon, so stay tuned to see what her finished piece looked like. But here is mine. So I am very pleased with the firing on this. There are definitely some things I would do differently. So this ended up being about an eight by eight tile. <clears throat> the variation in pink, that pink powder on top of the other pink does not show up at all. So even though they are technically two different colors, you, you really can't discern any change there. So I would have liked maybe a little bit darker color and a little more differentiation, but I am very pleased with the way the Sienna fired against that, um, French vanilla, and I'm also pleased with that it was a venturing green I put on top of this um, other green, which now forget what <laughs> green it was. But um, I think the, the grout work looks cool. I might have been a little cleaner. I had like a little lump down here that you can kind of see. Um, but generally, I like the way the way that fired a uh, nice clean back on it. And um, I don't know, the, the flower centers, uh, I still get kind of a bee vibe, particularly because of the black uh, background that comes through. So I may have done a little bit something different on the centers of the flowers. But overall, I think they're really, overall, I think the project is really cool. Now, I have this stand and um, this is clearly too big of a stand for this, this piece. So that's not uh, gonna be the finished way I do it. Part of me kind of wants to frame this, so I'm not sure how I might finish it out. But before I finish it out, I may still go back and try to put a darker powder on here and see if I can get a little bit more uh, color variation in the flower. So this project for me is not done. For you, it's done, but for me, it's not. A uh, quick word on the grout here. So you saw that I did cover this with clear and uh, I fired, I decided to go up to 1400 on this versus 1380. And that gave me a little bit more of a shiny polish on the on the grout, uh, quote unquote grout, it's really that black piping paste. I reached out to Paula McCoy and asked her if that piping paste was food safe. And she said, if you fire it at a high enough temperature where it gets shiny, yes. If you have more of a matte texture where it can kind of, you know, absorb food a little bit, then probably not. But in this case, I fired it warmer and I covered it with clear powder. So I'm pretty happy with it, but this is not gonna be a platter. I'm gonna keep this as a flat tile decorative art piece. So now, Let's cut away and see what Jackie's looks like.
right, one more reminder. Here's what the inspiration piece looked like. Again, this is a uh, mosaic tile design and in the Art Nouveau style. And here is Jackie's. And so make sure you go check out Jackie's channel because she's going to do a little video about how she did this. But you can see the vitrograph stringers, the beautiful violet that she got, the awesome pop of color that comes from the dichro that she used in the middle. She had a beautiful piece of 96 uh, glass that she used as the background there. And I just think this is really neat. And and I, I, I'm, I, if Jackie, you should be thrilled with this. Here are two pieces side by side. What an interesting challenge project here. Take an inspiration photo, see how two people interpret it, and then go with it. I, I really enjoyed this project. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure you check out the video notes for all of the links. Catch you later. Bye-bye.